Hello, and welcome to this special edition of GC360 News, our final show this semester. Today we'll be hosting a political debate featuring the three candidates for Milledgeville Mayor. I'm your moderator, Michael Warwick. Milledgeville City Government has faced many trials and tribulations this past year. Now, we'll look at what all went down. Mayor Richard Bentley went on medical leave in October, leaving acting Mayor Jeanette Walden to fill in for him. Then came allegations that City Manager Barry Jarrett handled city funds unethically. A special master ruled that Jarrett's actions were indeed unethical, but the city council rejected a recommendation that he step down from office. Bentley, who had also been running an insurance agency, resigned as mayor on February 3rd, citing personal health issues and business problems. On April 20th, almost two months later, Bentley was arrested after turning himself in to the Baldwin County Sheriff. Bentley was charged with seven counts of misappropriation of insurance premiums and five counts of issuing fraudulent certificates of insurance, essentially insurance fraud. With Bentley out of office, a special election for mayor was called for June 16th. And that brings us to today. All three candidates for mayor are in the studio to debate the pressing issues before the voters of Milledgeville. Businesswoman Melba Burrell, thank you for joining us. Good to be here, thank you. Former Mayor Floyd Griffin, thanks for coming out. Thank you. And businessman Gary Thrower. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. I'd like to welcome our viewing audience, including those of you watching 13 WMEZ's live online stream of the debate. We'll get to the questions shortly. But first, some background on the candidates. Our correspondents have prepared brief reports, starting with Katie Souther's look at Melba Burrell. Melba Burrell has lived in Milledgeville for 43 years. She says the city can and should foster economic development. We have to look at funding. There's, there's some money available. Our city has money on hand. We're not, we're not a city that does not have cash on hand. There's a lot of demand deposits on hand that can be used to fund economic development. Burrell also says the city should give its full support to efforts to redevelop Central State Hospital campus. Burrell has long experience in running businesses in Milledgeville. She and her husband Charles have owned North Columbia Street's Haviland Express Car Wash and Lube since 1990. This is Katie Souther reporting for GC360. Floyd Griffin has had a long career in public service. In 1994, he defeated an incumbent to become the first African American in modern times elected to the state Senate from a rural legislative district containing a majority of white voters. He's seeking to become mayor for the second time. He first served from 2002 to 2006. He was the first African American elected as mayor of Milledgeville. I'm running for mayor to serve out the remaining term of the, the previous mayor because we need someone to serve during this short period of time who's been there and done that and is ready to hit the ground running to understand what the issues and the challenges are here in Milledgeville and being the mayor of uh, the old capital city of Georgia. Griffin is a retired U.S. Army colonel. He served as a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. In Milledgeville, he is the president and CEO of Slater's Funeral Home. He also serves on the board of trustees of his alma mater, Tuskegee University. This is Will Dodgen reporting for GC360. Gary Thrower is from Milledgeville, and he owns two businesses in town, Cornerstone Commercial Mortgages and Cornerstone Medical Staffing. As a newcomer to politics, he says he has a goal for himself if elected mayor. We faced so many negative issues of late that's kind of divided the city and the county and the whites and the blacks. And I want to be a unifier. I want to be somebody that can reach out to all communities, all people, and, and try to find a way that we can work together. He says there's a lot to like about Milledgeville. I love the lakes. I love the river. I uh, love the fact that we have Georgia College and Georgia Military College here that, that provide a lot of cultural experiences that no other towns wouldn't have. Outside of work, Thoreau thrives on being outdoors. He hikes and enjoys whitewater rafting. And he is also an avid gym rat. This is Dallas Yates reporting for GC360. Let's get to the debate now. All three candidates have agreed to these ground rules. I'll ask a question, and each candidate will have up to two minutes to answer. Then each candidate will have up to one minute to rebut or add additional information. We'll go for one hour, and candidates will 
have the opportunity to ask each other questions during the last 10 minutes of the debate. I'd like to have candidates answer in alphabetical order. Melba Burrell first, Floyd Griffin second, Gary Thrower third. Let's start with the recent allegations of ethics violations in our city government. As you know, a special master has ruled that the city manager violated ethics standards in moving city money from bank to bank. What is your position on the case, and, and how will you restore trust and confidence in our city government? Thank you, Michael, first of all, for hosting this, and thank you for the students at Georgia College. It's great to know that the students are interested in democracy. Uh, the ethics violation is a serious violation, uh, and the city hired uh, Special Master Patrick Longing to hear this. And Patrick Longing's ruling was not only was Barry Jarrett guilty of the violation of, of the ethics code, which was retaliation, he also said that there were four city council people who were guilty of the same thing. However, we have um, a city manager form of government, which makes, um, his conclusion was that Barry Jarrett could have done it even if city council had not agreed with him <coughs> doing it. Therefore, Barry Jarrett was the one that, that um, exacted the retaliation. I am running on restoring ethical government. We will not be able to have economic development without honest government. There will not be any more closed meetings. There will not ever be retaliation exacted against a citizen in any way for any reason. Um, the mayor is in charge of the agenda, and the mayor has the right to control the meetings. Therefore, I will have that right to say to the attorney or to the city manager or to the, uh, the city council people that we will not go into a closed session that is against the law uh, that violates Open Meetings Act. We will not ever take action against a citizen. I will encourage citizens to come to city council. Uh, ethic, ethical government encourages participation. I will have a place on the agenda that says citizens' comments. You won't even have to call and ask to be on the agenda. It will already be on the agenda. And if citizens are there and participating or, and are being <coughs> encouraged to participate, democracy furnishes will, will flourish. Also, it will allow citizens to have the government that we're worthy of in this community, and I will do that. Mm -hmm. Colonel Griffin. Well, my whole professional career, 23 years in the military, uh, the 25 years I've been back in Millersville as a business person and as uh, uh, in politics has always been very high ethics. I will continue that. I will make sure that as mayor that we carry out the laws, the rules, the regulations, the ordinance, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever uh, is in place to, to, uh, to make that happen. Uh, from the standpoint of the ethics situation uh, that, that took place, uh, the only thing I want to say about that is that it was only one person was thrown under the bus, and that was Mr. Barry Jarrett. And I think that there were some other individuals that should have been singled out by the special master. Matter of fact, and I don't think we have enough time. I don't have that much time. Got a minute. Right? How many minutes? I'll give you a minute. Okay, give me a minute. First of all, I think that the previous mayor takes responsibility for this in the extent of not having in place the ethics committee to take care of that responsibility, and we had to go out and spend $17,000 plus on a special master. And I think the council and the mayor still had the responsibilities to put in place that uh, uh, the members of the ethics committee without going outside, bringing a special master in to take care of the responsibility that we should be doing here uh, in our city. Mr. Thrower, your thoughts on the ethics and the, uh, how you'll restore trust and confidence in the government? Well, I was uh, deeply concerned uh, when the decision came down to uh, not take the recommendation of the special master. And uh, I feel like the, uh, after, after speaking with counsel, speaking with, uh, with the uh, city manager, and actually reading the transcript, I can understand why, why counsel made the decision they made. Uh, as Ms. Griffin pointed out, uh, it, he wasn't uh, he wasn't uh, alone in that 
in that uh, action. It was uh, something that was uh, that was generated from several different uh, occasions. Uh, however, uh, the council made the decision they made uh, not take that recommendation. Uh, they looked at Barry Jarrett's 27 years of service and felt like uh, a slip of the tongue wasn't uh, worth uh, uh, reprimand to the degree of a termination and decided to, uh, to hold on to him. He, uh, from, from everyone that I've spoken to in the city and uh, city employees, city uh, council members, uh, think highly of Mr. Jarrett and his, and his, uh, his management skills. Uh, so my point being is that with, with the uh, former government we have in place, uh, I feel like it's incumbent upon myself to accept the fact that the decision been made, the, uh, the, the question is, is over. Uh, it's, it, I'm, uh, I'm charged with uh, going to council and, and seeking, uh, seeking out relationships and, and, uh, and uh, with, with all council people that uh, you know, will allow me to, to build, uh, build a coalition and, uh, and, and, and begin to build this city back into the shape it was at one point in time. Uh, Mrs. Brella, a minute to rebut and also um, could you tell us if you would reverse the decision of the special, of the special master? Would I ask the decision include the city council as well as Mr. Jarrett for, yeah. for being found guilty? They ba it, he did actually say all of those were guilty, and the only one that was asked to resign was Mr. Jarrett. And I have spoken to Mr. Jarrett and told him that I did not believe that he was the only one that should have received that. The problem with it is when a, when a judge asks <coughs> uh, elected officials to resign, they're not going to resign. That's a given, okay? So that that's where we ended up. As far as yeah. I'm concerned, the city council has made their ruling. Now, on something that, that Mr. Griffin said, the mayor was not the only one that was responsible for not having an ethics commission in place that required this special master to be appointed. The city council was responsible for that also. They were negligent in not having that uh, ethics committee in place. A minute. Uh, and and, and uh, Ms. Burrell is absolutely correct, but the mayor is the, is the chief uh, political leader in the city and he should have made sure that the council carried out the responsibility. See the mayor has one appointment, the council has an appointment and the mayor make a recommendation on a second appointment and the council uh, confirms, uh, confirms or not confirm that. So uh, as the mayor of, uh, as the next mayor you're going to see this mayor doing what he did when he was mayor before, leading and not following to make sure that we are doing the kinds of things that we should be doing in the city of Millersville. Mr. Thurman? Well, it's my understanding that uh, uh, the problem with uh, the ethics committee, uh, having that uh, committee not fully uh, uh, in place was uh, partially due to the fact that our uh, previous mayor had been taking a leave of absence and uh, there was some confusion about uh, whether or not he had appointed someone or not. Regardless, I, I agree with Mr. Griffin, uh, the, the ethics committee should be uh, in place at all times regardless of uh, the circumstances. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, in our current form of government, you know, when I reverse the decision, uh, don't have that option. Right, right. Um, we're going to tackle another big issue right now, uh, the consolidation of governments between the city uh, and Baldwin County. Uh, what are your thoughts on the idea of cons consolidation? Do you support it and why? Um, as running for mayor of the city of Milledgeville, I am very much in favor of having the opportunity to vote on it. I have not attended any of the meetings. Uh, I have been involved in City Hall going to all the meetings and trying to work on good government. I did take my weekend, my Sunday, and read for the first time the charter. I see some problems with the charter for the city of Milledgeville. I see some good things for the charter of the city of Milledgeville. Um, I will be the best mayor that Milledgeville could have if we stay as city of Milledgeville. If the city voters and the county voters decide to go a different direction, I will work toward the best transition that can be made that will provide the best government for us. Um, I am very much in favor of seeing that um, the people are educated and we have an opportunity to vote on it. 
I, there's not any evidence that indicates that economic development flourishes or improves with a consolidated <coughs> government. My real focus right now is on economic development and jobs. Mm -hmm. And without that evidence being there, um, which it is not, uh, I have concerns. There's some things that concern me in that charter. Um, and people need to study it. They need to avail themselves of that opportunity. I will, though, come to the table as mayor. I will not uh, not participate in um, planning. Our city government um, and much of our county government has not come to the table to talk. This charter was done by uh, an independent group with the city and the county government really not participating. And as a mayor, I will be at the table knowing what's going on. Um, if a charter should be revised, if it passes, I will be knowing what, what's going on. If not, I'm going to be serving as the best mayor. Well, let me, let me just be very uh, specific and, and address the issue, okay? I am not for or against consolidation, the concept, but I am totally against this uh, referendum. It's not good for the community. The timing is bad. Um, it causes problems with uh, degrading uh, the voting strength of our uh, minorities uh, in the community. Uh, why should we pay a mayor who is part-time $35,000 a vice mayor, uh, 25,000, and council members, uh, uh, are commissioners, as they are called, 15, I said million, I mean thousand, 15,000. And as a business person, as the three of us are, I would not go out and buy uh, a, a business member, uh, 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 Thora, uh, <laughs> Gary without having uh, a financial analysis of the business. Now, you look at this. Normally, most of us, maybe they are, they have enough money to go out and buy money, uh, buy business cash. Well, I can't. So I would have to borrow the money. So if I'm going to a financial institution to borrow the money, then uh, they want to have uh, some type of business plan. They want to have a financial plan and know what it's going to cost to buy that business. So. If we're going to go through consolidation, then what we are doing, we are asking the citizens of this community, if it's approved, we're asking the citizens of this community to be the financial institution because if, 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 if it starts costing money, we're going to have to raise taxes and going to do the same thing that they are doing over, uh, over there in the up County. Mr. Thor? Well, I have always uh, been on the side of having the right to vote on that charter. Uh, the people's right to vote? Rather. The people's right to vote has always been sacred to me. Uh, uh, what I will say, I, I, I agree with Mr. Griffin on the fact that uh, uh, you're not voting on consolidation, you're voting on that specific charter. And I have read it, I've read it thoroughly, and I've, and I've had lots of discussions with a lot of people on both sides. And it's a very divisive issue with city versus county people. Mm -hmm. they, they are just about torn completely down the middle, as far as I can tell. Uh, what, I, what I am promoting is uh, opportunities for the citizenry to have an opportunity to be educated and make an informed decision in November. Uh, but you know, make no mistake about it, it's, it's not strictly consolidation that we're voting on, it's a particular charter. And, and, and uh, as Mr. Griffin has pointed out, I had been, I had been uh, I've been uh, updated on the uh, the voting districts and the uh, and uh, uh, lack of representation and you know perceived whether it mean and, and and I haven't done enough research to know if it's if it's uh, actual or just perceived to be uh, that that way. But uh, uh, I, I, he has the impression that Melba and I have enough money to do what we want to do. And uh, uh, but honestly, uh, I'm a small businessman, and before I would jump into any venture. I would have a feasibility study done that would show me right. what it's going to cost, what the savings is. Is it, is it a five-year savings? Is it a ten-year savings? Where do we? Where does that that uh, that uh, that bubble meet? So, again, I would just I would just say it's 
Millersville and Baldwin County can't afford to make a bad business decision, mm -hmm. and we need business people in place that will understand the need for uh, logical, uh, good business-like decisions going forward. Uh, okay. Melba, one minute. Um, we have not done, there's not been a cost uh, analysis done. I don't think we do know how much it's going to cost us at this point. Um, it is very important that city and county government come together, uh, and apparently they did not come together on this. It was not worked out by city council and county commission. Uh, that does not speak well, probably, for uh, I'm, I want to be mayor. I want to run this city. I will be at the table, and I will never uh, not be there to have a discussion. I will not sit home and pout about it. I will go, and I will get, be involved, and I will find out, and I will be able to go back and say to the city, this charter has some problems. Now, I do think that disenfranchisement needs to be considered. I think it needs to be considered, and there are some issues there that need to be considered, but the, the charter is done now. It's there. We don't have a right to change the charter. All we have the right to do is become educated and vote, and I support that. Colonel, you want to Okay, say now, I hear a lot of mumbo jumbo going here from both, both of you. I, uh, the charter was signed, I think, today by, by, the, uh, governor. by the governor, okay? Now, the, the charter has been out there in the legislative process during the last le legislative session. I went up to the, to the, uh, up to the Capitol to make sure I uh, took a look at that even before I even thought about running for mayor again. I didn't have that in at all. Now, both of you seem to be saying that you already have your mind made up. Mm -hmm. And you just don't want the, the general public to know. Now, I'm going to ask you all today to man up and woman up and say whether you are for or against it. Don't wait until you become mayor and then come out and say, well, I'm for it or I'm against it. Look, you, we are running to be the mayor of the city of Millersville. We are the, the, the leaders uh, of that city, whomever is elected. I think the citizens and the voters of uh, the city of Millersville want to know from you, Melville, and from you, uh, Gary, what you stand for. So man up, woman up, and say you're for it or you're against it. Let's, uh, let's go down the line. Um, Melville, do you, are, you, are you for or against consolidation? Have you At the stage it's in now, if it were brought to me, this is not for me to lead the city or for me to influence a voter in the city if I'm mayor. This is for me as Melba Burrell voting my precinct in Millersville. I would not vote for it. Colonel Griffith? He got it. Well, you got you, I, I've, I've yeah. got your, uh, and, and uh, you know, it, it may sound flaky, but uh, the, the pure honesty, uh, uh, my, my pure honest answer on this is that I need to be more educated on it. I've not had an opportunity since I decided to throw my hat in the ring for mayor to listen to either side give a presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, for what I understand, both sides do a, a real good job of persuading one way or the other. But yeah, I've read it. And uh, quite frankly, it's written by lawyers so that lawyers can enact legislation. And it's, uh, and it's, it's not the easiest <laughs> document to read. But I, I, Can we stay with that for a minute? Absolutely. I'll no, no, I'm asking. It. I'll give you 30 okay. seconds. All right, 30 seconds. seconds. I'm going to ask, a, ask you a couple of questions. Do you want to pay a mayor $35,000 a year? Do you want to pay a vice mayor $35,000 a year? No, do, you, do you think that the, 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 the mayor and the vice mayor should be elected at large? And you also stated that as a business person, like we all are, then you would want to see a financial analysis. So if you, if you agree with all of that, then you should agree that you are not for well, what, what this I'm, charter. What I'm telling you is that uh, I've read the charter. I'm interested in, in seeing the financial analysis. Hypothetically, let's just say that, that financial analysis proves that the cost uh, is uh, worth the benefit, short term. And these, these fears that everybody has about uh, the fact that it's going to you know, increase our, uh, our budgets from both city and county uh, are removed, then, then, uh, okay. then that. We're going to move on here. <laughs> um, we got a question that just came to us on Facebook. I'd like to share. We'll get back. We'll get back. Okay. Um, talk about the economy some more and jobs. But we've got a question that just came to us on Facebook. Um, 
The stories of discrimination surrounding capital uh, mm -hmm. and chops have been going on for years. Uh, yet no one seems to be doing anything about it, as, as, this, as the citizen's asking. Um, if you are elected mayor, what will you do to specifically address the discrimination at Capital City and CHOPS uh, and, and other discriminatory, discriminatory businesses locally um, in Milledgeville? Discrimination is illegal, and discrimination should not be happening. It's, it's a violation of civil rights. Um, as mayor, I would not tolerate discrimination if I was aware of it in a business. I own a business, I don't discriminate. Uh, I would not tolerate. Um, the rule of law is important. Um, Capital City must be investigated. I have heard, as you, many of you have, the reports that have come in, they've been on the news, and I, I, I've been to a Times talk over at Georgia College, I've been to another gathering, and I have heard, I hear enough that tells me that uh, probably um, somebody needs to file a suit. But that needs to be done, and then Capital City needs to have an opportunity to defend themselves, and their, the investigation would come, be a federal investigation because it's a federal law. It's a, it's a violation of your civil rights. Uh, it violates what our community stands for. We cannot have businesses here that are discriminating against people. It creates that sense of what's going to, what el who else will enact re this kind of discrimination if it's allowed to go on. Um, obviously, it is, it is hurting um, our reputation. It's hurting the city's reputation. And as mayor, that's, that would be very important. We're trying to establish ethical government again, transparent government, honest government. And if we as a city, and I as mayor knew, knew about that, I would be immediately wanting to see what's happening. Now, I don't, we don't have the power to do the investigation, but we have the power to say, we want this to stop and we want someone to look at this and see what's going on. And I would move forward very quickly with that. Um, I have, I've not heard of other businesses in town that are doing this, but we certainly don't want to have that reputation. When, when students come to school here, uh, they need to feel safe, they need to be taken care of, and we need to have that reputation as a city of having work, working with the colleges here and making people feel safe, mm -hmm. and discrimination is not going to make someone feel safe. Kirk. Okay, I can't disagree with anything uh, uh, Melba has, has said, and I can just add on to, uh, to what uh, what she said. I, only one thing I slightly disagree with you is that I think we do have the power to uh, engage uh, uh, the GBI, uh, the uh, Attorney General, uh, uh, some other agency to come in and, and help investigate that. But one of the things that I would want to do, and I'm not as up to speed uh, as probably I should be uh, on that whole issue, and I have talked to students. Uh, in the last uh, couple of three days. Uh, matter of fact, I spent about 15, with a, 15 minutes with a student uh, when I was coming up here. And what I would like to do as mayor, and what I would have done by now, I would have met with the students uh, to get a better handle on what was going on and uh, the citizens in the community. Uh, uh, I stopped uh, on my way back from uh, a, a business uh, concern this afternoon, and I had some locusts to uh, citizens, local citizens, to also mention that to me. And, and then I would have my uh, police chief to get involved, and we do an investigation. I sit down with the Capital City uh, ownership, too, and, and try to, to see what their side. But we will move on this. Uh, you know, I understand discrimination. Uh, I understand it better than anyone sitting at this table. And we don't want to have this in our city because uh, we want our city to move. We want it to move forward. We want uh, businesses to come here. We want our students here at the three uh, colleges, universities to be, feel comfortable and to go any place in this city and county and, and feel that they aren't being discriminated against. Mr. Oh, I totally agree. Uh, uh, discrimination cannot be tolerated in any shape, form, or fashion. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I, kind of side with Ms. Burrell, the fact that uh, not sure exactly what the city can do uh, independent, uh, but uh, this is a small town, and uh, I agree with Mr. Mr. Floyd that uh, Just call, by me, now, call me Floyd now. I'm just, you know, I'm just <laughs> I got old you. school. But uh, I agree with Floyd when he, when he says that uh, by now, 
someone from the city should have had a conversation with somebody in management at, at Capital City to really get the skinny on exactly what uh, has transpired, what is going on, uh, and uh, encourage them to stop the practice. Uh, understanding that it's such a volatile issue, we've seen too many times on television issues where a small spark turns into a major fire, and we just need to nip it in the bud if we can. And, uh, and I, I think we need to be proactive on this as opposed to waiting and re being reactive. Uh, Ms. Brill? Apparently it has been going on a long time. It is not new. So it's not like the city officials may have just heard of this. I think it probably has been heard about, okay? And there's not been anything done. Now, as mayor, I'll walk in Capital City. I will go in Capital City and see it, and I will see what I can see. I will see what I can find out. The city controls liquor licenses. They control business licenses. You know, you don't want to go in with um, taking action to get someone before evidence is proven. So I first of all encourage, let's prove that it's happened. But what I have heard so far, and I will tell you, I heard it from people as they spoke about it. And I heard it on um, the, uh, the bouncer that was interviewed, the former bouncer that was interviewed. I heard him describe how it was done. I think there's enough evidence there to step up there now and let's take some action and encourage an investigation. I don't know if we can get a GBI investigation. We could get a GBI investigation if the MPD did not do, if they called on it, but maybe that needs, but it's basically going to be a civil rights violation. Well, you, you know, you don't know, uh, you don't know what and who you can get to investigate unless you ask. That's right. And that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it would be the GBI or, whomever, but we have to, we got to reach out and touch someone and say, this is the problem, a mm -hmm. challenge we have here in Millersville, Absolutely. and we want to get it solved. And that's the bottom line. And this mayor, don't, not going to mess around with those kind of things. We're going to, we're going to get that taken care of. And I hope it's taken care of before the 17th uh, of June when I, uh, when I become the mayor. You know, uh, what I would say to uh, is is uh, yeah I do agree that uh, I mean it's we can't we can't overlook this we've got to we've got to address it and we've got to address it right now but you know I, I want to give the uh, uh, business owner the benefit of the doubt to be able to speak to him to make sure that one of his employees hadn't taken a random act and and uh, mm -hmm. and, and gone off on his own uh, you know we do have to respect that business owner and and you know I last time I was at Capital City my my ears rang for three days so I, I don't frequent Capital City. <laughs> But, uh, uh, but uh, so I, and, and honestly, until the television report came out, I was unaware of it. But uh, it was disturbing, no doubt. Uh, let's move on to education. Um, a lot can be done here. A lot can be done here. What can you do as mayor to improve the schools here in Milledgeville? You're talking about public, the public schools public in Baldwin schools, County. Public schools that you have, uh, I mean, that are in your city. Absolutely. Uh, my, my children went through public schools. Um, I was president of the PTA at West End. Harrisburg, Davis, Body, and Baldwin. That's when we had a lot of schools to go to. We don't have that many now. I was president at all the PTA, PTAs and all those schools. I have always been involved in public education. One of the things that uh, is very positive for us right now is Dr. Price. She is very good for our public schools and she is beginning to show some leadership that I think is gonna make it better for us. Um, the city, as mayor, we need to recognize that our schools are important. We need to know that, that without good public education, we're not going to attract the industry. That's where the workforce is coming from. So we need to put some emphasis on public education here and um, emphasizing that Dr. Price is doing a good job. See if we can partner as a city with these public schools and how to bring in, offer our resources, but also if there's ways that, that Dr. Price and the Board of Education knows of that the city can offer help it is imperative that you have good public education. Now, it's not a, a, a you know, I don't have to, um, you know, I've been there with public education. I know that it's important. And I've spent a, much of my time involved in public education, volunteering in classrooms. My grandchild, uh, I went into his classroom for three years and volunteered in that classroom so I could be there and be present and be involved in public education. It is extremely important. Colonel Kirk. Well, when Dr. Price came in uh, last year, uh, and once again, this was before I even thought about, I even 
dream of wanting to run for mayor again, I went out and, and visited with her and offered my experience uh, in education, especially at the higher edu uh, education level, but just being a citizen to assist and do anything that, uh, that, I, that I could to help with the, with the uh, education uh, uh, system here. But what I want to do is uh, appoint a CEO advisory committee to help me determine the growth and in, in, in where uh, our community should go. And one of those individuals that I would ask to, to sit on that advisory com committee will be the superintendent uh, of schools, and in this case, uh, Dr. Price, because I want to look at the, a strategic look of the, of the community and, and not just one entity because we need to look not only at, at the uh, educational piece but what uh, education, what impact education have on economic development and, and jobs and, 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 and the other issues we have in the community just like this capital city thing. All of that can tie into this so that CEO advisory committee will help me uh, determine where we should go in the city, uh, the community. Uh, I agree, Dr. Price has come in and really uh, made a major impression on uh, Baldwin County and at public schools. And uh, I've served with her on the board of directors at the Chamber of Commerce and she's a uh, very personable, very outgoing person and I think we've, we've really found a gem. Uh, you know, what can Baldwin County, what can Millersville do to improve the school system? You know, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of uh, you just you just can't always throw money at a problem and fix it. You know you always hear legislators and you know from Washington to Atlanta. You know I'm a big education supporter. I'm just going to throw this money and we get brand new schools. We got this. We got that. I want to find a way that we can establish a mentor program where we can start putting discipline back in the schools, where we can start uh, reaching these kids, making them understand that. You know, police officers do respect, teachers do respect. You know, I hear it over at Oak Hill from time to time. There's more sheriff's officers over there, sheriff's officers over there than students. I mean, it's just uh, something all the time. We just we got to find a way to keep the keep the kids that are interested in education in the right program, and find a way that the kids that, that that are gone astray to find an alternative program that they can that, that they don't distract from the other. But we've got to find a way to get discipline back in the school. I just don't see, see any way in the world our education program is going to improve nationally without it without discipline. This is real. Your thoughts on taking that from more of a mentality approach rather than, than throwing funds at the school? Um, funds are necessary. Funds are necessary for public education. Uh, Forty percent of our, our students in public ed education right now are, are in poverty in Baldwin County. We get free lunches in our schools right now because uh, we're poor. Our county's poor and, and we qualify for free lunches. Now, my children went through public school. Mr. Thrower's children did not go through public school. I have been in a, every public school in this community. I didn't see that horrible discipline problem. I really didn't. I saw good teachers working hard, but they need better support. Now, my, my husband and I are cooking dinner for the band at Baldwin High School, and it was planned a long time ago. I'm cooking dinner for over 100 students that are band students. I'm doing that for my business. I am a supporter of public education. As mayor, I would work to do the same thing. I, I have been in those schools. I didn't choose to do something different. I don't have to rewrite. I've been there. So I would give strong support to public schools as the mayor and, and b being able to offer those kinds of things. Hey, is there something we can do, Dr. Price, that from the city that will help public education? The city has a lot of cash on hand and a lot of money on hand. And sometimes it's even just recognizing, recognizing that the teachers may need some recognition from the city and from the mayor. And being over there in those schools and saying, as mayor, I am proud of you and I'm proud of the school system and I've supported it and I'll continue to support it. Well, I don't think too much, I can add too much to that other than when I was the mayor, I invited uh, the students uh, up to, uh, to City Hall uh, on different occasions and to come in and uh, uh, recite the, the Pledge of Allegiance to, uh, uh, 
uh, at our, our, our council meeting, and, uh, and those are some of the things that we should continue to do is engage the students, engage the school system. Uh, I have been invited on numerous occasions to uh, visit the various schools to speak on like Law Day and Career Day and et cetera, and uh, I will continue to do that uh, as mayor, or if I'm not mayor, I will continue to do that. Oh, I do agree that uh, public education is critical and, and deserves uh, all the support that the city and the county can provide. Uh, uh, you know, having, uh, having not uh, had, had my kids at public school, uh, I, I do, uh, do lack uh, some understanding of what, uh, what Ms. Burrell is speaking of, but uh, I do know that in, in, in some situations, uh, because your kids are in the accelerated program, they may not see some of the things that go on in other parts of the, of the school. Uh, but uh, it's, it's just my contention that if we had a strong mentor program that would, you know, talk to you know parents, mentors, uh, uh, older brothers, older sisters that could that could really mentor these kids and understand, you know, make them understand that uh, the that education is critical to the future. Then, then maybe, just maybe, we could start turning things around. I want to get back to the economy. So I know I cut you off a little earlier when we were talking about uh, jobs and things, so I'll give you a little extra time. Uh, what, as mayor, uh, would you do, or what do you prescribe in a way uh, to bring economic development to Milledgeville uh, and jobs? The first thing we have to do is establish an honest government. There, no business wants to come here an open business and bring employees and live in a situation where retaliation will take place. So that has to be established. We're almost there, I believe, so we'll move on from there, okay? We, we're going to work on jobs now. So economic development and jobs, ha we have to have that here. We lost 7,000 jobs. We had, we've not re recovered that. That was a, during the economic downturn. We have not been able to recover that. Last week, we closed a building at Central State Hospital that lost more jobs. On April the 15th, we closed the power plant that lost more jobs. So we're losing jobs and we're not getting jobs here. It, we have a Joint Economic Development Authority um, that gets $25,000 a year for marketing to sell our city. Dublin spends $300,000 on marketing. Dublin is eating our lunch right now on economic development. We have money in our budget. We have money. Um, the, the, the city has liquidity that can be used to, to provide more funding for marketing. We also, we provide tax abatements. We need to look at incentives. Uh, Dublin offers incentives to industry to come. We have money in, our, in the city budget to offer incentives and to just say, we'll give you some money to do startup cost. We'll give you some money to move your employees here. We'll give you some money to, to buy equipment. We need jobs. As mayor, I will look at working strongly for economic development. We have eight million gallons of excess water. We have plenty of water. We need to be looking at how to get that industry that, can, that needs water, food processing. There are other industries. We have a basis for being able to get people here. Our government needs to operate properly. We need to get busy and offer some incentives and get some industry here so that we can help our community and we can get jobs back. Uh, when I was mayor, we uh, was able to play an important role in economic development uh, and jobs. I like to just remind uh, the citizens and the voters some of the things that we did. Uh, uh, Lowe's, Lowe's came here uh, on my watch and was one of the first uh, uh, industries, uh, businesses that came and talked to me directly, not to the economic development executive director, to me, and indicated that they wanted to come to Milledgeville. And we had to do certain things to be able to get them here, and which was a infrastructure type of uh, projects of $500,000. And I took my team up to Atlanta and walked out of Community and Development uh, Affairs uh, uh, Department with a $500,000 grant. And one visit up there, all we had to do was complete the paperwork. Uh, uh, Walmart, when Walmart 
wanted to move from its previous location to its present location. I had to play, I played a very important role in helping to make that happen because there were citizens uh, in the community. Uh, Alden Chase had some major problems with Walmart's shopping center moving up there. So what I'm trying to say is that I want to continue to do what I, I did before in using my uh, uh, contacts and relationships at the state and at, uh, uh, at the federal level and working with the present economic development team. Uh, I have spent time with both uh, the executive directors of the Central State Hospital uh, Redevelopment Authority and our local joint authority just speaking about how I, like to, I will be engaged as mayor because under this charter, there are a lot of things that the mayor can't get engaged in, but this is one of them that, that he uh, can definitely get engaged in. Let's, uh, let's let Mr. Thor in on this. Uh, your, your, your plan or what you want to see as mayor? This is jobs. my game plan going into the mayor's role. Considering the uh, form of government we have and, uh, and uh, uh, what I plan to do is, is trust the people that are hired to do the job of running the day-to-day -day operation of the city. I don't want to be micromanaging them. I don't want to be in there every day on top of them, questioning every minor detail. What I want to do is get in behind say, the uh, Central State Redevelopment Authority, get in behind the uh, Baldwin, Millersville Baldwin County Development Authority, and be as supportive and be engaged in what these, these guys are trying to get accomplished. I want to be able to be to go to Atlanta. I want to go to wherever they need me to go to sell this to sell this city. This is something that's right up my alley from what I do in, with my professional career. We, we, you know, we, we, we've sold $450 million worth of loans all up in seven states across the southeast. And uh, you know, we're, we're constantly out in, out in the foreign lands trying to sell our, sell our wares, trying to uh, establish a trust, trying to establish uh, some, uh, a, a, new, a, new, a new contact. So this is, this is what I do for a living. So I'm, and I'm familiar with getting out in the road, meeting with people, Trying to find find a ways to do business. It's all about negotiation. It's all about concessions. It's all about uh, trying to find a way to, to uh, meet in the middle with an with an agreement. So, honestly and truthfully, uh, economic development is going to be at the forefront of my tenure, and uh, I, everything I can do to help to help the professionals that we've hired in the economic development, I will be in behind them, trying to make sure council uh, allows us to fund them properly so that we can compete, because it's no different than a football game. We're competing for jobs. And like Ms. Burrell said, if we don't have the right, the right uh, game plan, we're, we're, we're lost before we get started. Ms. Burrell. I do want to say Central State Hospital Redevelopment Authority, and I did mention that it is an extremely important part of our economic development right now. I was just out there this morning. I've been out there on several occasions, and it's amazing what's going on. And we do need to offer support to that, as well as to our local redevelopment, uh, our Baldwin County Development Group. Um, I do have a, have a different view, though. I will support, but I'll do more than that. I'll lead. I, we will, as mayor, I will set the standard that we have to put more money in this. We have to be able to have industry come here. We must give them some incentives to be here. There will be some sp very specific things that I work for. I think that we've hired some good people, but we're not getting jobs, so I'm going to take that responsibility to move forward with it. Do you trust the Redevelopment Authority? That's uh, the current people that are leading that right now? The develop we have two that we're referring to here. One is Bowen County, the Military Bowen County Economic Development Authority. Yes, I think that they are doing a good job. I do think that they're being hampered because they're not having enough funding and because our city has not worked together. We have to work with our other governing bodies. We have to work with the county. It has to be one face. When people come to the town, they're not going to say who's representing the city, who's represent, re representing the county. It's got to be one face working together and I will work to help build that so that we can have economic development. I just want to uh, make sure that uh, the listening audience understand that my uh, uh, jobs and economic uh, development uh, uh, plan was presented uh, in an, in an op-ed uh, in both the Union Recorder and the Baldwin Bulletin uh, in the last couple of weeks. So I hope you had an opportunity to read that or go back and look at that. But one of the things that I, I, I would place a lot of emphasis on in, in moving in that direction with uh, jobs and economic development, look very closely at the boards and the members that are on that board. 
we have some members that's been on those boards, especially the, the joint board, for a long time. And we need to send some of those people packing, and we need to bring in some new young blood. Uh, because how are we going to continue to to build the community if we don't uh, if we don't uh, appoint younger people on the board? Uh, I was at a meeting last night, and uh, the, the minister said that anybody that's over seventy <laughs> is in overtime. And I looked up at him because I guess I'm in overtime. So that means that we need to start bringing some younger people in to get involved so one day we can have uh, uh, some individuals that's running for mayor who has served in elected positions before before they run for mayor. Mr. Tarr? Well, uh, we all met with, uh, with both, both commissions uh, you know, so, so far during our campaigns. And, and I just have to say, uh, I was most impressed with, with both, uh, both of my presentations that were provided to me. Uh, uh, the job Matt Pointer is doing, uh, and, and really, Floyd, I don't believe it's the board that's the problem. I, I mean, we've come in second place on, a, on numerous uh, opportunities. Now, you know, why? I mean, could it be the negative press we've been getting? Could it be some other things that, that was going on in, in Ball County? I don't know. But uh, uh, he's, he's looking long range. He's looking five years down the road. He's looking at things that, uh, that uh, uh, companies that have uh, the horsepower to, to really uh, make a big splash in Ball County, he's, he's already doing things that are, you know, five, six years out. You know, uh, the, with the CD, Central State Redevelopment, they are uh, the, the, the things that Mike Couch has been able to do out there. I mean, and he's got a very prestigious board, and you know what you need is movers and shakers that can uh, have have those contacts and networks that can that can uh, get in Atlanta and and really start you know making some waves. So uh, I just think that uh, we're on the cusp of, of really seeing something major coming towards Baldwin County, uh, as, as we've talked about. Our our, our politics is, is improving. Our uh, the, our issues with the uh, city government are, are, is making dramatic improvements, and uh, so you know once we start you know finding finding the uh, the, the the cool side of the pillow and, and really start you know uh, doing things right and and and, uh, and and funding these things properly and getting after this business, I think it'll come. I think we've got too many assets in this town for people to turn away. Let, let me just respond to one thing. Uh, I'm not by any means indicating that the members on the board uh, uh, having uh, an impact on us not getting business. Uh, and uh, I know that Matt Pointer and, uh, and, uh, Mike, and uh, Mike Couch is doing a, a, a great job. The, the, the board out at Central State has only been there for uh, you know a couple of years or so. The board of uh, the Joint uh, Committee uh, board that, that, that I'm speaking of. Now, I know personally some incidents that that board was not thinking strategically. They were not uh, treating some of the individuals that have come before that board uh, asking to, for support to, to, to do some projects here in the area. So what, I, what I'm saying, not only on that board, I want to look and evaluate all of the boards that I have the responsibility of appointing or making recommendations to the county. Right. Uh, with, with some of the remaining time here, uh, we're going to give the candidates an opportunity to address each other uh, with a question, whether it be uh, you want to address a specific candidate or both candidates. Um, those, those individuals will get a chance to answer. Uh, we're going to go down the line. Each person will get an opportunity to, to ask that question. We'll start with uh, Mrs. Burrell, do you have a question uh, for these two candidates? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll start with, um, with Gary. Uh, Gary, um, in light of, and we started our, our, our conversation this afternoon about what we would do about the situation with ethics, I would hope that we never have to face this again, okay? Amen. I would hope we never. I was the only one of all of us who's attended any city council meeting, mm -hmm. who's been present at any city council mm -hmm. meeting. And it, it was not easy, and it was very, very difficult to have to do. But in light of that, if this should happen again, because at this point we've still not repudiated retaliation, it hasn't happened. If that policy should ever be used again, or if the open meetings um, 
law should be violated again. How would you choose to handle it differently than maybe has been handled? The mayor, of course, stepped down. City council regularly denied that it had happened. So the citizens stood up and said, our, our city deserves a government that, that's worthy of us. And we were brave enough to do that. And I was one of those citizens. And, and I, I was in a gathering where, where you made the statement that we didn't need to air our dirty laundry in, pur in public. Amen. And you made that statement. Amen. Now, would you continue to have that same view that airing dirty laundry by exposing retaliation should have been taking place in the back, taking care of the back room. As I mentioned, retaliation will not be part of my program at all. We're, we're, we're going to be open and transparent with everything we do, no question asked. Uh, my concern is could there be some discretion with the way it was handled? Could there have been a different way to approach this, handle it so that it's not on the uh, uh, on the uh, radar of, of all the movers and shakers in Atlanta looking to come into Millersville. So when I, when I was asking you, you know, uh, you, and, and, and I, I don't, wanna, don't want to give you the wrong impression, I don't think that you are, uh, uh, have done a bad job with, with looking into some things that need to be looked, at, looked into, but, we, but maybe, just maybe, there was a little bit more discreet of a way to handle it, that we could uh, address the problem, made the corrections, and moved on without such a black eye in Atlanta. I would like to respond, please. Okay. Uh, there was not any citizen who asked that the government repudiate retaliation until we received a letter from the Chamber of Commerce, Chris Clark with the head of the Chamber of Commerce of the state of Georgia, that was sent to our mayor. And it said, if Milledgeville does not repudiate retaliation, you will not receive more referrals for economic development. Mm -hmm. That is what prompted citizens to go and say, we're hurting. We're hurting. We don't have industry here. I've lost business. And you're causing this to happen. And, and do you know, y'all were not present at these city council meetings, that this group of citizens stood in front of city council three times and said, with no press there, mm -hmm. saying, or was not covered by the press, the newspaper was there, but was not actually covered except one time. And we said, would you please just apologize? Just apologize. Now, it, what better way? Would that, would that have uh, satisfied Absolutely. Them? It would well. have ended it. If they had said, we're sorry and we repudiate retaliation, nothing else would have happened. Then that would have been sent to the Chris Clark, who's head of the Chamber of Commerce, and we would have been done. And instead, city council spent $57,000 defending themselves on allegations that all they had to do from the beginning was say, I'm sorry. Let's and guess. that shouldn't have been done in the back room. That should have been done in public in a transparent situation. And, and you know, it would have been done. There's, there's uh, allegations that, that that letter was requested such that someone would be disciplined because of this action. So, I mean, there's, when you start getting into he said, she said, we, we just opened up the Pandora's box. So, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't there. I don't. I didn't. I wasn't in Chris Clark's office when the letter was written or whatever. But nor were you at City Council. I'm nor not, have you been in. I want city you to council. understand. I'm not at City Council because I'm not concerned. I'm. I'm, I'm not at City Council because I don't want to be a distraction. Now, honestly, when 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 uh, I watch Council on television and there's a crowd and they're passing notes and whispering in each other's ear, it is a distraction to Council. And and. Uh, for, so far as I'm concerned. Do you really think citizens do not need no, to go to city council? No, let's, 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 let's let Colonel Griffin in on this. Do you want to address anything no, or, or ask a question? I, 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 I don't want to address that. that, that, that uh, we beat that horse to death, <laughs> and now we need to, to move on. The city council has made a decision. Uh, I will respect that decision, and, and let's move on. But, and I'm not going to ask either one of you a question, but I want to end this by saying that I hope that both of you before election day and really before uh, advanced early voting, that you all man up and woman up and tell the citizens of Millersville how you stand on consolidation. That is one of the most hottest issues that we have going between now and, uh, and the end of this uh, Elect, uh, the end of the, uh, this election. So. Well, I will certainly pledge that as soon as I make a decision, I will make it known. Okay. Uh, but
but as I mentioned earlier, I'm not, I'm not, it's not smoke and mirrors. I'm, I have not seen the presentation from either side, and I, you know, from, from what I gather, you're, there's you're, some issues. You're, you're, you're a very smart man. You're an intelligent man. Uh, I haven't known again. you that long. You're very, well, you are. You're on a business. You're doing well. And violated the law. It's not a difference with me. I chose not to do that. Now, they have been found guilty to be able to make a decision not only about, it did not come from me. I'll tell you, it came, you know, supported. And I, I understand. That's it. I think, they, I think that's all.